Alright, welcome back. It is time again for the Autodesk 3ds Max 2018 YouTube Classroom Series. This is video 21, quarter 1, week 5, day 2. We're going to continue working on making our sword. So, um, you will start with this, just like I did, because now your Max Start is set up so that every time you start, it'll start like this. So we go to File, Open Recent, and I'm going to find my Blade 1. And this is where we left off last time. All right, so I'm going to hit P. Now I've got two separate objects here, and that's fine. Later on, we're going to connect them, and we're going to do a whole bunch of other stuff. But for now, I think this will be just fine. So next thing we're going to do from the front is we are going to look at a cylinder. So we're going to make a cylinder out of the handle. Okay, The handle here is going to be a separate cylinder. So from the top view, because we want the cylinder to be long, uh, like a handle, we're going to create a cylinder and I'm actually going to hit S for snap um, and I'm going to snap to the center and then make it roughly the right length and then drag out so from the front view now you can see that I've created my object and I'm going to go ahead and just move it down here okay so we can see that it's not exactly the width we want from the top um, I should actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to hide. I'm going to select hit Q, select the hilt and the blade, right click, and I'm going to uh, hide selection right there. Okay, cool. So now all I've got is my cylinder. So from here, um, I can start looking at how big I want this. I'm actually going to adjust it in the settings uh, from the front view. And I'm going to go cylinder. I'm going to call it um, M for mesh underscore handle, H-A-N-D-L-E. Uh, and my radius is going to be eh, there-ish. And my height is going to be about that tall, which is 17 point. Let's do 7. I want it a little bit taller than you'd expect. That way it's going to run into the handguard or the hill the hill yeah handguard cross guard okay now i've got a bunch of um loops through here that actually aren't too bad but if we think about it we're going to need a bunch of loops we can add them when we need them and for now this is probably okay to start here so i think that's fine i will make sure that my sides are set to 16 because 16 is a much better number and my cap segments i'm going to set to two and that gives me a point down here that I can adjust. It also has a bunch of uh, vertices up here that I can use if I want. We probably will, but um, so, but it's it's fine for now. So my radius was 1.55. Oops, let's do that. Okay, cool. Good, good, good. So from the front, that's pretty close. Okay, I'm gonna hit M for material. And it'll think for a second. I'm going to select this, and I'm going to attach it so I can see. And if I can't see well enough, because I feel like that's maybe a little dark, um, I'm going to drop the opacity to, uh, let's drop it to 40. That's good. Well, I can see through that a little bit better. All right, cool. I can just close that. Okay. Now, because it's a brown background, um, it makes it a little bit harder to see, but it's okay for now. Go ahead and right-click and convert to Editable Poly. And what we're going to do is start adjusting some of these uh, mesh verts. Um, we know that we're going to have sort of a rounded curve, right? We know that through here, there's going to be some sort of curve. One, at least so it's here. One, two, three. So this will be through there. Um, let's go ahead and hit W. And I'm just going to move these up. And I'm going to move this up for now. I'm going to turn snapping off because it's snapping like crazy. All right, now I'm going to adjust this, but I'm actually going to hit uh, left. Let me turn on my key mapper so you guys see what's going on. Um, a file. I'm going to save it right now. Save as so that I don't overwrite the old one. I'm going to go into 718 classes. So I suggest you do this too. That way you don't overwrite your old one. Uh, and we're going to call it sword. Cool. 
and save. All right, so I'm going to hit R, make sure that I can grab it from the center. I'm going to rescale this whole thing in a bit. Hit W and move it up some. And then now I can actually look at my the bottom section. Okay, um, these there's too many faces here. So if I hit uh, four, I can change it to faces. I can select all these faces, hold Alt, and select these, which deselects those. Right now. I can use the shrink button and that will shrink it so that I just grab the bottom set of faces. So now I've just got that bottom set. So from here I'm going to look at it from the front or left, it doesn't really matter. And I can actually drag this down. Okay, and you can sort of see what I'm going for here. I'm trying to make this rounded edge. Now in my image it looks flat, but you're going to have to uh, take my word for it that it's not. I went ahead and hit 1 and I went to verts and I'm going to shrink twice so I just get that one point you could click on it if you wanted to left view again pull that middle one down a little bit to make it rounded so what I've done is I've created a rounded bottom that now I can drag down like that and you can adjust it even more um, to make it look as close as you want now whenever you resize something make sure you resize it from the center that way it looks the way you want it to I'm gonna hit W grab this and move it down to here like that maybe take this one move it out a little more make sure it's the right size on all the way around so it looks right now it looks like a I don't know a bat or something um, okay so what we want to do is we want to create another edge in here but bring it in we can actually take this one for now drop it down and then bring it in hit R and then tighten it in like this now that's pretty close, but in order to get a nice rounded edge, I'm going to hit number two, grab some of these, and you can grab them all, or you can grab some, and insert a loop. And from here, you can actually round that loop out like this, and then move it up a little bit. So it works just like anything else that we've worked with. Okay, so I've I've burned through some of my loops here, and in order to get some of the, uh, uh, whoops, hit number one, grab those. Um, in order to make sure that we have like the rounded parts. We're going to have to take sections like this and then use these, rescale them in to get them like that, and then hit 2, grab just those loops, loop, insert loop. Now, if I grabbed other loops, it could end up making problems. Okay, so we're just going to go for the generic shape for now. I hit number 1, grab the top, hit W, move it down to the widest part ish. Um, and I'm going to keep doing that. Actually, I'll hit number two, and I'm just going to double click this top line. Now, when I double click it, I'm actually just getting the ring. So I can hit left again. I'm using W, and I'm just going to move it down. And this is going to be my inside ring right here. Now, this is different. I want actually this to come out, okay? So I'm going to grab this entire loop. Uh, hit R and expand out like this. Hit W and I'm going to move it down. And what that does is it creates a ring. All right. By doing that, I can actually adjust. Um, I can make a ring that's going to be almost flat and sticks out like that. And it's probably too big for now. I'm going to scale it in a little bit. Cool. Cool, cool. Now, see how I've got all these inside faces selected? I'm going to right-click and convert to face. Converting to face is really, really great um, because what it does is it allows me to grab all of these vertices that I want without, um, or grab, turn all those edges into faces, which is really good for extrusion because you can't really extrude from vertices, and you can from edges, but generally it's a bad idea. Uh, let's see. Z, I'm going to hold... Um, Alt. Mm, I don't like this. Okay, I got a new new trick. Ready? Okay, deselect everything. Well, just click anywhere else. Click vertice. Click the center vert. Now right click and convert that to face. And what that does is it just gives you the face without it without this inner ring. So what I'm doing is I'm converting one vert to faces. So every face that's connected to that vert is going to be highlighted and that's great because I just wanted this top ring and not this outside part here because now I can extrude this up by a little bit click OK hit 
the left view and now you can see what I got. I still have the top set of faces. Oops. Left view. And now I can hit W and I've still got those top faces even though it's kind of hard to see. And I'm going to expand those out. Once again, I don't ever want to do this because that makes an oval. And that's not what I want. At least in this case. That could be what you want, but that's not what we want. So I'm going to do this and then I'm going to extrude again with that. Click, bring that back down and we should be doing a group extrusion. Click OK. Now if you want it nice and smooth like I do, we're going to hit number two, grab that edge, insert a loop, hit W, bring it up, and then scale it in a little bit and do it again. You don't actually need to grab all of them, you can just grab two or three and then the loop will still loop properly as long as you uh, have it set like that there so now I've got like a smooth rounded section that's still circular and now I haven't added the other loop through here right so I need to add another like wide section so once again I'm gonna hit make sure I'm at number two grab those edges insert a loop and then I'm going to bring it in right roughly where I think it is which would be there bring it in I'm way or way in but I wanted to just double check to make sure I'm where I thought it was and then this place uh, loops insert loop loops what happened I don't know what happened okay I'll expand that out now that's roughly what I was looking for so now I've got all of this section from the left view I'm gonna grab hit number four I'm going to marquee select the entire top section there. And I'm going to hold Alt and deselect the sides so I get that. Then I'm actually going to hit Delete. So now I've got a hole. If I hit number four, four, oh, that's faces. <laughs> uh, if I hit three and I try and grab something, I will grab this top face here, which is a hole. But you see, since we're going to inset and take this whole line and put it inside the handguard, it doesn't really matter if it's got a hole in it or not. If we're printing it, it is a huge problem. But since we're not printing it, I'm not too worried about it. So now you can go through and clean up anything else. Um, if you want to add more loops, you can. Don't go too crazy. Um, you've got to think about how big the object is and how much detail you need. Because if this handle, which we can't even see in our original concept art, if you remember, if this handle has a whole bunch of edges, then that doesn't really, those edges might not be well used. Um, sometimes I find it's better to hit M, grab another material, just like a generic material, and then apply this like gray material to the scene, and then go to uh, edge faces and turn off edge faces. I can close this. And now sort of look at the object itself in perspective view. So like you can see that it's, kind of missing like any sort of real definition. It's got a real hard edge here. We've talked about hard edges when we worked our last section, but it's got a hole through there. You know, other than that though, it's it's not bad. I like this sharp edge. It makes this look like metal and this is going to be like wrapped leather or something and we'll make a nice hard edge on this too. But first, let's go ahead and go back to our original object. So I'm going to uh, right click, unhide all, because remember we hid the hilt and the blade. I'm going to hit M and I'm going to grab my default material and I'm going to marquee select up here and I'm going to apply it. Oh, I'm still in editable poly mode. I got to grab these other two objects. And then I'm going to apply it. Cool. So this is my, my current, this is what my sword looks like for now. Okay. Now, each one of these things is individual. Okay. So each one of these pieces I can grab and move and that's not what I want. I want this whole section to be one object and the way we do that is attach and I'm going to attach everything to the handle. So I'm going to select this and I'm going to go to uh, editable or um, uh, modify tab and then I'm going to click this attach button. Okay so now um, I'm going to attach everything to the handguard because the handguard is what I had to begin with. Okay. All right. So I think what we're going to do is stop right here um, and then we'll do all the smoothing groups the next time. So currently we have our sword built. 
we have all the pieces attached. Um, right now, the whole thing's called handguard, and if we grab it and move it around, it does move no matter where we grab it from. So I'm probably going to change it to M underscore sword. I know, so creative. Um, that way, it's just one piece, and it's sort of good to go. So I'm going to leave that here. It's going to have weird shading issues, like those are all really hard edges and um, stuff like that. But the next time, what we'll do is we'll go ahead, adjust all of our shading issues, and then we will uh, render it out so it looks cool. All right? So I will see you next time.